and gentlemen, welcome to the fifth Citation Labs webinar. This one we're concentrating on broken link building. Now we're we're really taking broken link building a few steps back because a lot of folks want to jump right in and we respect that, but there's a lot of information we'd like for you to have before you even initiate a campaign. So this webinar is very much about determining if broken link building is right for you, for your clients, for your brand, uh, for the projects you're working on, okay? So that's what this webinar is about and we, we look forward to, um, uh, <laughs> to sharing some of the things we've learned over the last four years in broken link building. Um, so our goal for this uh, webinar is to enable you at the end to be able to explain broken link building to your clients, to your boss, to the stakeholders in your organization, uh, whoever may or may not be interested in doing broken link building. We want you to be able to determine if it's really a good fit for you, right? Um, if this tactic really makes sense. It's being talked about a lot these days, but my, my position is, and, and this isn't, all my colleagues don't share this position, but my position is that it isn't right for everyone. So we're going to go over uh, and, and talk about some of the parameters that we think makes uh, a, a website or a brand a good fit for broken link building. We're going to work especially hard on finding productive topics, all right? So um, this, is, this is the area that, you know, if you, you nail this part, you're going to be able to, it's going to really set you apart from about 95, at least 95% of the SEOs out there. Because what we see a lot is folks approach broken link building and they just start, they jump right in, and which is, you know, I commend that. That's how I like to start things myself too. But they don't get the results they're expecting or hoping for. And they either blame the, the tactic itself, the, maybe the, the process they're using, the tools they're using, their content, the internet, who knows. But th it really does work. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to tell you the, the kind of the shift, the mental shift you need to make in order for it to work exceptionally well. And lastly, one of the things we want you to be able to uh, learn after watching this is to, how to create content for broken link building, what that content is like, uh, likely to look like. All right? So, and, and also, folks, all along the way, if you have questions, please send them to Megan. Megan will be um, breaking in periodically as needed to um, both slow me down if I'm going too quickly over certain parts and to um, pose your questions should they fit in that, in that particular area. Also, we'll have time for questions at the end. And again, folks, this is high level. This is, does, is, is broken link building right for you and your organization? Okay, so number one, um, broken link building. It's not like going to the department store with a grocery or with a list of things you want to buy. It's more like going to the flea market. You never know what you're going to find, but there will be treasures there. So if you're looking to decorate your your living room and you say, oh gosh, I need a new sofa, and you go to the flea market, you may come home with a new bed. You may come home with a new kitchen table. Not exactly what you're looking for, but gosh, it sure is, it sure is lovely. Um, but that's the sort of spirit with which we uh, humbly submit to you that you approach broken link building. Um, it's, it's, you're much more likely to, find, to, to be able to uh, work with the opportunities you find if you approach them creatively and looking for ways uh, to make them work as opposed to sort of forcing broken link building onto a given particular project. So this is one of the, the core kinds of uh, shifts that we think needs to happen. Um, but but it's, it's, it's definitely a, it, it's very different. I think if you're doing guest post prospecting, for example, um, it it's, makes a lot more sense to go out there and look for, uh, you know, for example, um, nursing bloggers, bloggers who work on nursing. Um, it's, uh, it, it makes more, I think it's, um, they're much more likely to be out there. Now, if you have a, a very specific document that you want to promote in the nursing space and you use sort of longer tail keywords uh, you, to, to search for those, to find something that's broken, um, you're, you're much less likely to come up with, with a very specific um, with, with prospects for a very specific document that, you, that you're trying to promote. But we'll come back to that. I'm going to hammer that repeatedly, uh, and, I'll, and I'll be discussing this, this sort of 
fact of broken link building um, throughout this this uh, webinar. Now, um, before so, so to sort of help shape our ideas of broken link building. We're going to look at a couple different types of um, broken link building replacements. Okay, so we 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 posit we hold that there are two types. Okay, now there there are two types of broken broken link opportunities. Um, that's where you do a one to one replacement with something that's dead. The other one, and so this is where what's dead is actually genuinely replaceable. Like you will be able to recreate this particular document. Usually, it's a single page. P perhaps it's a, a, a small section of a website that's broken. Um, and so, as an example, we wanted to share this uh, the, the American Civil War homepage. I'm going to pop over to that. So here it is in archive.org. Now, this is just this is I love this page. This is old internet. This is 1995. It's just. I, you know, this is, the, the person who made this page is, you know, one of the, the grandfathers of the internet, right? The people who, someone who loved the topic so dearly that they spent hours and hours and hours curating this page, right? So this is the kind of page, if you find something like this, and this, this one in particular I think has about six or, I think six to eight hundred links still pointing at it. You find something like this, this is, this is golden. Now, of course, this is on the Civil War, uh, so... This is a case where, you know, this might be more like a tractor than a uh, a kitchen table in our in our earlier analogy, um, depending on on what your website is. But you, I, I think I found this one too when I was looking for uh, science related stuff. So you you really again you really never quite know what's going to turn up. Um, so but this is this is an example uh, again back to the um, uh, back to the um, actual. Uh, um, slides here. This example is what we would call one-to-one -one replacement. And a one-to-one -one replacement is where you are creating, recreating the document. Now in this case it's copyright so we would suggest humbly that you not copy and paste the document out of archive.org but you would create something that is as exhaustive and as carefully curated and then attempt to pitch that. Um, but but you, you, create, you recreate the entire document, and this is what people typically think of when they think of broken link building. So when I when I speak with folks and I'm saying, you know, well, give me your your version of broken link building, the one to one replacement, nine times out of ten is what people say, and we typically see, you know, maybe five percent conversion, five to ten in some cases. I think would probably be extreme, but you can see decent conversion rates here. All right, but it does limit you because there are other types of broken websites out there, other types of opportunities. So this is an example that we found: um, the Cyber School Bus. So uh, the UN has a teaching resource um, on what the UN is, and it's for uh, you know designed for students, right? Uh, so this is an example of something that, in my opinion, is just a bit too big um, for, let's see, was that cyberschoolbus.un.org? Just a little bit too big. We'll look at that in archive.org. Um, a little bit too big for someone to recreate. Now, could you, you know, copy and paste the whole thing into, you know, yeah, probably. But that's illegal, so don't do that. Um, this is what it what existed, right? This is more than is reasonable for someone on a link building budget to completely recreate, right? This is an entire, you know, website on um, that kind of uh, puts together or collects all teaching materials about um, the United Nations, right? So. What you can do here, you don't have to throw this away just because you can't recreate it. But you, what, what you would, you create a document that can and should be linked to alongside this. So we call this particular tactic, um, we call this, uh, what do we call it? Um, fix and suggestion, right? Fix and suggest. So we're saying, all right, here's the fix. And the fix is um, this URL here, which actually, incidentally, is still a bit down right now. Um, this is where the UN is moving this page. 
And so you write, again, you write to everyone who's linking here, right? Obviously dead page. You say, hey, you guys should be linking here. And oh, by the way, we have a fantastic guide to, uh, a, you know, a collection of lesson plans on the UN or, a, you know, a collection of, um, you, I, I don't know. You look for the intersects between your your brand and your and and the UN. <laughs> if you can uh, engineer those, and then you've got then you create the document that can and should stand alongside pages that are linking to this the the cyber school bus, the UN cyber school bus. So again, folks, the two tactics, two ways to use broken link opportunities. Number one is just a one to we call it one to one replacement, right? This, that's where you are you are creating the replacement on your website and you're emailing everyone and saying hey this is this was this great resource it's dead now we've got a replacement we've got a fix for you the number two hey folks this is something that's dead here's the fix the fix is not your website but hey while you're making the fix we also recommend these resources that are relevant uh, to you know learning about the UN for in this in this case right so those are the two main ways that we that, that that we see campaigns sort of playing out based on the opportunities that that we discover. Okay, so just to just to reiterate, number one, what is broken link building? It's not like the department store. It's not like you know going into a you know you have a menu and you select I want uh, topics I want this topic that topic and that topic uh, because you already have content created. No, no. Uh, it's it's more like going to the flea market, and you kind of need to leave yourself open to possible directions that may emerge, may or may not emerge. But you need to look, right? And then once you've found something that's broken, we we hold that there are two main ways of uh, sort of um, uh, sort of capitalizing on these on these broken opportunities. The first, again, is that one-to-one -one replacement, where where you are recreating the document on your site and then requesting that they change the link from the old one to your site. Number two, where you are providing the fix, you're doing the work to actually find the new fix for, for, the, for the website or the document, and you're, create, you're adding in a suggestion. Um, and this is the, the, what differentiates the two types of opportunities. Number one is this one is recreatable on, you know, typically on a single page of your website. This one is far beyond the scope of a, a you know an everyday link building campaign all right now so why do broken link building why should you do it at all okay now obviously we want links uh, for our website so our Google rankings can improve and yes <laughs> links still improve your Google rankings in case anybody in the audience was wondering um, so it's it's also it's it's also a, a white hat method Right, so we're not going out trying to promote our sales pages and trying to get uh, anchor text or you know anchor text rich um, links. We're we are we are cre we are finding uh, quality resources that are dead and recreating them and getting links to them. So it's it's you're you're doing good for the internet. You're finding stuff that's broken, that's dead. And you're helping people clean up their links pages a bit and improve their links pages. And that's great. Now, another reason why it's awesome is that new opportunities always emerge, right? So, for example, um, there's news in the U.S. that the Department of Homeland Security is going to be shutting down, um, which is one of those sort of bonanza opportunities, which happen periodically. Um, an entire government website can go down. There's there's an example I've used uh, before. Um, I think it was it wasn't nutrition.gov mypyramid.gov it was something that the US government had put together to uh, to look uh, to, to provide resources for people on nutrition and it's it's dead and gone and I think there's about 50,000 unique domains pointed to it um, the the in the UK uh, the the government has changed how it um, it presents its web properties and has consolidated to a single domain in some cases and which again has cr uh, op created a lot of dead uh, uh, link opportunities out there uh, but it's always happening not just in the government not just in government uh, areas of course but it's always happening where an old document 
that was valuable to the web to a specific vertical or a specific subject area where old documents just die. I mean, we'll go back to the Civil War example, the Civil War page um, here in the U.S. is this is just a fantastic example, just a beautifully curated page that is now dead and gone, right? It just it just happens. It's always happening, right? Um, and lastly, you, you, you'll, you'll get a real in-your-face view of what is actually linkable, okay? Now, why is this important? Well, because folks, we think we know what's linkable, all right? We, uh, you know, as, as link builders, we have an idea of what linkers want to link to or what we think is popular or what's going to play well on social media or what's what could possibly go viral. But you kind of need to throw all that out the window. And it's it's really useful to, to see firsthand what is actually getting links. Um, it's it's a really it's it's humbling and and a useful um, sort of reminder of what actually what really actually earns links. Okay, so that's why you should be doing it, and and certainly you will see you know improvements in your Google ranking. But let's leave all that aside um, for now. But you will you will see those improvements also. Now, who should do broken link building? Okay, I don't recommend broken link building as a sort of, if you're new to link building, I don't recommend it as your first experimental tactic. Okay, broken link building should be reserved for further on down the line after you've done some of the basics, after you have um, served your immediate market, your immediate market with, with content, so you know who's buying from you and you have created content to meet their needs, where you've really done your your research and you have created content just for your buyers okay and you've tried to build some links to that as well perhaps done some guest posting perhaps done a survey and release those results where you've really kind of helped show the market that you know what the heck you're talking about um, after you've done all that and then you want to start doing broken link building great uh, so it, it, but, but it's not I just I, I would shudder to send someone that's brand new to link building into broken link building. You can do it. I'm not. I'm not trying to say no, that it's not going to be possible, but it's going to. You're going to really be well served if you've done some. If you've done some other types of link building in the past. Um, so if you have uh, products and services uh, that you're trying to, if you're trying to build links to product and service pages, um, you should not be doing broken link building. Um, again, you should probably be either buying links or looking for opportunities to get reviews or, um, I didn't say buying links, by the way, you should be um, looking for reviews, maybe maybe light guest posting, you can sometimes get um, uh, relevant links that way. But we often see folks approach broken link building with a specific page in mind that they want to promote and it rarely works well that way. Um, and also, it, it's not going to be great for um, for people who need all of their content to be branded, right? So if you're in an organization who or, or where where you you know your manager is going to look at a, a document on the Civil War and say, what the heck does that have to do with our our, our you know our our audience doesn't care about the Civil War at all, even though you've created some maybe some relevance to it, uh, you know if you, if, if there's going to be some brand dissonance, there's going to be uh, th there's the Possibility, the strong possibility of brand dissonance with um, a, uh, perhaps some some topical dissonance with with what you're with with what you actually do. Now you're going to be looking for ways to tie it in as much as possible, tie in the content you're creating with the with what you find that's broken. But it's not always possible. Again, thinking back to the the example where you know you're not going, it's not going to the department store. You're not you're not shopping on Amazon. You're shopping on Craigslist. Uh, you know. So, so you don't. You, again, you don't know what you're going to find. You're not going to be able to find exactly what you're looking for. You have to kind of look for. You have to be open to the opportunities that present themselves, and that's rarely. Uh, a, a, that rarely means that it's going to work in in, a, in an organization that has a lot of um, attention to every piece of content that gets published, right? So, I mean. You, you could, you could even go so far as to create a new section of your website, perhaps. That is, if, if you're going to do go down the broken link building path in earnest, um, a, a section that's dedicated to web preservation, for example. That could be a, you know an entire section of your website uh, or a new new um, uh, 
category or, or um, folder on your on your domain is is web preservation, and that that could be where you st start to store some of these things. So it, so that sort of feels so that it has a sense of of maybe mission to it perhaps, um, but but again it's it's it can be a real tough sell in, in in certain organizations. Now I will say I will say as a side note that if you are working in a in a very branded um, sort of um, a very branded uh, with very branded restraints where you have to have highly branded content uh, you you can use uh, the the fix and replace or I'm sorry the fix and suggest method not not the one to one but in some cases you can you can pitch alongside big things that are dead but you will sometimes have to sort of uh, squeeze the uh, you know try to try to squeeze in relevance justifications there a little bit um, and then lastly it's you know you're, you're going to have a, a wide array of educational content right so it's it's not necessarily going to it's definitely not going to be salesy so just bear that in mind so these are these are some of the the, the qualifiers that some of the, the things you could be asking yourself about um, when you think about should I be doing broken link building is this going to make sense for my organization is this going to make sense for my clients is this going to make sense for my my you know Will I be able to justify this um, and really make it make sense? Okay. Now, hooray, we get to really hammer on this. The number one shift SEOs need to make. You don't choose your broken link building content. Your broken link building content chooses you. Okay. Now, let's get back to that. This this is just another way of sta stating our, our flea market example, right? You go into the department store. You, you can go with a list. You can go with something very specific in mind. You go to the flea market, you really don't know what you're going to look for. You have to have your treasure hunter goggles on. You're looking for ways to use what you find, not find something that you have very specifically set out to look for. It's a very different mindset, folks. It really is. Uh, and it, it's, it's a challenging mindset. It's a challenging leap to make. But but quite often we see folks start with a specific piece of content in mind, and what happens when you have a specific piece of content is that you don't find many opportunities. Typically, uh, not always. I will not say you, that's always the case. But when you have a very specific piece of content in mind, or you 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 think that that you can approach it, um, and and uh, and promote links pages, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, promote uh, sales pages or serv your service pages. Um, it's you, it, it's it's just isn't going to work. So it's this is very much a a a tactic where you're sort of saying, well, what is broken, and how do we make what's broken work with uh, content that we can create on our website? So that's that real this and this this folks, this is the thing. This is the the number one. If you take nothing else away from this webinar, if you have nothing else that you can share with you know your clients, with your boss, with your with with any stakeholder in, in on this project that you, that you'd like to do, it's this: is that you don't control the content. Uh, the 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 content controls what you the what's broken controls what you create. Now, again, you can in some cases do the fix and suggest, but even then, what you suggest has to be relevant, highly relevant, to what is broken. Right, so you can't always know what's going to be broken, and so you should always be waiting to to sketch content, you know, to spec out content before uh, until after you have done your prospecting. So the prospecting has to happen first. Um, so e enter each project as a blank slate. Right, um, don't don't spec out content. Don't give your writers any work until you know what's actually broken and then design content to fit alongside or to replace what's actually broken out there okay now this is this is where it gets good okay this is the part that where where we're really going to start to give you some hands on uh direct advice around prospecting and looking for opportunities that will be as relevant as possible to your vertical. So all along we've been saying, well, you can't really control, well, that's true, you can't really control what you find that's broken, but you can control where you look and and how you look, and you can try to find stuff that's as relevant a fit as possible. So that's what we're going to talk about now. So 
I, I, I know I've been, you know, sort of putting off this tactic and saying it's, it's, you know, it's very tough to control. And I definitely, I still hold that it's tough to control as a tactic. But I, I will say that, that, you know, using some of these techniques that I'm going to talk about now, you'll be able to get as close as possible uh, to, to your, to your, um, uh, to your vertical, to your topics that you're promoting. All right. So. This one of the first things we think about when we, when we approach a broken link building project is where does the the target vertical, where does what the client actually sells, where does it fit, or or overlap or intersect in some way with academia, right? With with actual things that are studied in colleges, actual bodies of knowledge. Where and how does it intersect? Because it's these bodies of knowledge that are going to have you know, these old, musty, beautiful web pages that someone lovingly curated that are now dead, right? That's where these, that's where that exists. Um, so that's that's one of the first things we, we ask ourselves. And this is tricky to do. It really is to sort of pick apart what we sell and say, okay, what types of academic um, what kinds of types of academic sort of studies or, or approaches could fit in here? Not, and it's not just academics. It really isn't. But that's just one of the ways to sort of think about it. One of the sort of um, areas to gather what ultimately gather prospecting keywords, because that's that's what that's that's the, the the fuel of broken link prospecting is the keywords you're using. So where do you gather those keywords to to do your prospecting? Well, one of those areas is is um, the academic studies um, are, are surrounding your 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 vertical. If there's you know specific jargon that gets used in your vertical to describe the the practitioners, that's another another potential keyword as well. So we've actually found it's it's again it's it's tricky, but we found that that DMOS is is fairly productive for this. Now who knows of course how how much longer DMOS is going to be around. We love it. Um, but uh, let's let's dig in a little bit. Let's say we've got um, we we wanted to to uh, well this actually is a real example. We had somebody who had created a sleep tips um, uh, guide, right? And they wanted to promote the sleep tips guide. So and and it, they they were having trouble with with prospecting. So um, what we what we suggest and what we've been experimenting with is is how do we um, systematically break a topic or break a concept or a keyword out into its related sort of areas of study or its related um, uh, categories or subject matter categories, right? So we could do something like type dog, or sorry, uh, sleep tips in right here. And, and notice what I see come back. Sleep tips isn't going to be bad, but what I see coming back is sleep tips fits within this category of sleep disorders, right? So already what we're what we're learning here is that perhaps sleep disorders is it would be a uh, a more productive, more commonly used uh, term for for if you had content around um, sleep tips, right? So here's another one. Um, that, that we notice almost right away we've, we've got specific sleep disorders right so you, so as soon as so I, I love a good guide to sleep tips right but if I'm designing content or and, and if I'm trying to pick keywords to use for prospecting then I want to be more specific I want something that's you know sleep tips for people with sleep apnea the, the sleep apnea guide um, I'd even like an intersect with seniors or or you know, um, folks with disabilities, and we can we'll, we'll kind of touch on some of those things further on. But s sleep tips is, is certainly a great place to start. But y if you only focus on sleep tips, you're missing out on this this broader category here of of sleep disorders, right? So you know, you can you can come over and and sort of check into some of the oh narcolepsy, night terrors. There's some lovely stuff here that you could you could do prospecting around, right? So these are all things that are related. To sleeping, sleeping well, sleep tips, but that probably you hadn't thought of for prospecting. Possibly you did because you know you're awesome. But 
it's it's always great to have a second kind of nudge or you know kind of some suggestions from someplace else to c kind of get a sense of where something lives where where a topic lives um, in the broader spectrum of of human knowledge I suppose so um, there's some interesting other suggestions on here dreams psychology and dreams that's an interesting intersection right so now we've we've started at sleep tips and we've, we're getting over to psychology and dreams now and so maybe dreams or dream interpretation or um, you know sleep psychology if there is such a thing might be productive but all of these would be sort of avenues to, to test right so um, let's let's take a few of these let's take sleep apnea so what we like to do to test a keyword to see if this is going to be a, a, a reasonable direction um, I like to put that keyword in quotes and then do in URL links.html so this is one of my sort of proxy tests is this going to be a productive keyword um, and goodness gracious with 26 for, uh, 2600 results I would submit humbly that this is a, a fantastic direction for broken link prospecting now the reason why I use in URL links.html is it really squeezes the pages it's a massive limiter on on the types of pages that are going to come back so when we when we put in URL links HTML it really um, is is limiting the number of pages that are going to going to show up in our results and when we still see I would you know honestly if we had gotten three well heck even if we gotten 30 I still would have said it's, it's worth checking out but with 2000 it's it's very it, it could be a very productive direction which and so this is you know folks if, if if you if you're starting in something like sleep or sleep tips and all you do is look for sleep tips you're you're really leaving a lot on the table a lot of productive prospecting directions on the table for broken link building really I mean any kind of link building um, it could be you know regular begging um, or you know pr pitching uh, quality content evergreen quality content but um, anyhow it, if, if you're if you're not looking uh, sort of outside your what you think your content is about if you're not kind of backing away from it and getting some other angles on on approaching your topic then you're you're not going to be finding everything so again DMOZ is a wonderful place to start sleepwalking sleep process all these wonderful things um, I bet sleepwalking has quite a bit let's just check that out real quick um, now there yes you can definitely get into some rabbit holes here so I actually find it helpful for myself to limit how much time I'm able to um, do prospecting because I enjoy it a lot and I end up doing this a lot which is just gosh I wonder what's you know kind of this is looking not as useful honestly um, sleepwalking doesn't look as productive um, as a very specific uh, as sleep apnea and that's I'm just poking through and and so I see you know Eddie the sleepwalking cannibal no probably not my long dream sleep is magic no I don't think uh, that's probably so. So I, sleepwalking is is often used in other as a metaphor, as a uh, well. There's a sleep disorder center. So uh, who knows? You could try sleep uh, sleepwalking, um, sleep paralysis. Okay, I'll stop checking all these. I could because I could just dig into them because it's very interesting. This work shift is very interesting too for sleep tips. So if you're working night shift or you have sort of odd hours, there's been some studies recently on that. So that could be a productive direction for just general content creation sort of outside of, of uh, broken link building um, so it's a new sort of a new area of study and well, well at least I, I recently saw a study on it that said that it was de highly detrimental to your health to be um, uh, working odd hours is it, it, it was tough on on the human body so that that could be an interesting uh, direction as well just from from the news something something that's been talked about a lot anyhow um, let's go let's run through one more example uh, so we had sleep tips again this was so this, we had a, a user who who was trying to dig in to prospecting they had a guy a sleep tips guide and that can be productive and it might be useful for your site visitors this might be a fantastic piece for your your sleep visitors but something like uh, sleep apnea certainly sleep disorders let's let's check that out we did sleep apnea let's look at sleep disorders 
Uh, oh, only 1,300. So how interesting, right? So um, sleep apnea, which is a much more specific sleep disorder, has more results than sleep disorders in general. Um, that's that's interesting. Uh, so so that almost indicates it's, it's going to be better off in this specific vertical with looking at the narrower conditions of, of sleep disorders. Now, folks, if, if, you know, if you're following along from home, you're, uh, I hope your head isn't spinning, but this is this is the kinds of thinking that as a prospector you need to be doing. You, you, you really do need to get into um, how do I study uh, an area as, and get to know it as quickly as possible and look for the possible, the, the best possible directions for prospecting. So let's look at dog training now. Go back to DMOS. Uh, and so this up here isn't particularly useful. It looks like training has triggered a lot of unproductive stuff. But down a little bit further, um, recreation, pets, dogs, training, let's check this out. So this looks a lot more useful. Um, I see working dogs. That's an interesting direction. Deaf dogs, I'd never even thought about that. I don't know how many, how much content there's going to be around that um, as far as what might be dead, but there's definitely some interesting directions. Um, let's let's back it out a little bit. So this is something I noticed yesterday. We were uh, Megan and I were going through the our, our examples right here, folks. All right, breeds. All right, so we, we're in the dog section. Look at what the majority of the content is about is breeds, specific dog breeds. So if you're doing prospecting and you're in the dog space, right off the bat, what this tells me is that the most content has been created around breeds. Now, it doesn't always follow that areas of the most content creation have the most links and there and and have the most dead content, um, but there's certainly a, I, I would expect a higher percentage rate or higher percentage chance you're going to find uh, useful dead documents within a a space where there's more where there's just more content created. So let's look at breeds. Uh, one of the things we we so so we see it broken down into herding and hounds, livestock guardians, these sort of different groupings. Not super productive, but what this what this tells me is we could do is head over to Google and say, all right, most popular dog breeds. So we're going to presume that there's you know the most um, most most content centers around the most popular dog breeds. Sort of back through, I think it's Labrador Retrievers uh, is is the most popular dog uh, breed, if I remember correctly from from our research yesterday. So that. So, so you, you started with dog training, and so, well, let's do dog training for very specific breeds. Let's do tips for Labrador Retrievers. Um, well, certainly, let's see what's dead. Um, you know, you absolutely want to see what's dead also. But if you have a, um, if, if, you know, the majority, let's, let's see, uh, I'm probably going to misspell Labrador. Labrador Retriever. Labrador, <laughs> laboratory. Labrador, there we go. Let's try that. All right. So look at this, folks. Labrador Retriever with the same qualifier that we've been using all throughout. Neural colon links at HTML. Thirty-eight hundred results. Right. So more than sleep disorders. So there's more links pages out there that include the phrase Labrador Retriever. We can even throw it in title and see what happens. Uh, hey, Garrett. Yes. Um, just a quick question for people who are following along. Why are we looking for in URL links at HTML? Like, what what is that looking for on pages, and how does that indicate um, that there's a lot out there related to it? Wonderful, thank you, Megan. So the the qualifier we're using here in in this Google query, this is an advanced operator in URL, and what we're telling Google is only show us only return pages that include links.html in them. So there's going to be thousands of links pages, right? And they're going to include in URL uh, links. So um, notice we we used in URL links. We saw 2250. So that's and that's interesting and useful. But what is a what is an even better indicator of volume of links pages? Or at least how I've, I mean, you could, if, I, I, honestly, it's whatever you use the most. I use a very narrow, so I put 8.html in there because a certain number of people code their websites uh, and, and publish their websites to include .html at the end of their pages. And so there's an even smaller number of people that 
um, the, the small number of pages that will appear, but I know what I know is that if something is ha, has quite a few um, results with the this narrow so I probably should, so so we we looked so with when we added the .html we saw it went down to 151 results with no .html we have 2250 so um, out of the 2250 links pages that have Labrador Retriever in the title. Um, only 150 of them have .html in there, but th um, this this in URL links .html comes from the our our kind of our link prospecting processes. So when we're looking for lots and lots and lots of links pages, which we do for broken link building, the broken link building tool looks for thousands and thousands of links pages. One of the queries it uses is in URL links .html. Just that's just one of I think there's a hundred in the the broken link building tool we have. Um, the link prospector itself, uh, I think we have about 35 or 40 of the most productive. We've we've narrowed that a little bit just to look for the most productive um, uh, pages, but um, it's 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 from that that school of link prospecting where we try to look for as many different variations of how people indicate to their visitors that they have published a page that has outbound links on it. So this is a signifier that the publishers use to show the web, to show their visitors, to remind themselves that what's on that page is outbound links. Another, another one is web links, sort of an older one, probably not too many. Yeah, but let's see if we take that .html off. So uh, there's about 30, 39 results. So, so we have, you know, I, on on we have about 350 of these that that we use internally, um, that that we use to to look for for links pages, right, to help us back into where our links pages. So um, that we call those uh, internally, we call those sort of um, Qualify links page qualifiers, in in or links page indicators, and they're they're just phrases that we put alongside our topical phrases that help us uncover links pages. So really, I'm using it as when when we when I show this example, I'm using it as a a a rep as a sort of representation, a broader representation of what's likely to be out there on the internet. So I know if um, even with an end title, I've got 151 results with an in URL links .html. I know that there are lots and lots and lots of links pages out there about Labrador retrievers. I mean that's red Labrador retriever. Let's put retrievers on there. See what happens. Oh only 48. Interesting. Um, so so you might actually want to use both of those those uh, phrases when you're prospecting. Um, Labrador retrievers and retriever uh, because you you you're likely to find different pages, and look at that they're they're actually quite different pages. No, we didn't want to dig in. This wasn't necessarily going to be just a Google prospecting uh, webinar, but knowing a little bit about Google prospecting really will help you um, ultimately s plan and and uh, go into productive content uh, uh, and and productive um, uh, prospecting. So again, what we've been looking for today, uh, Megan, is that do you feel like that's if I explain that thoroughly? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Folks, if you have other questions on that, please let us know. But again, what the, the main thing that I want you to take home is looking for very specific, looking for specific um, uh, keywords to use when you're prospecting for broken link opportunities. And and certainly this this would apply even outside of, of just broken link building, but it's 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 just vital to your broken link building efforts, that you approach it without, um, you know, a very, very narrowly, a very specific document that you want to promote, or a very specific anything that you have in mind, and and start to look for what could be productive keywords, and then uh, use those as as sort of a starting point. All right, let let me. Uh, go back over here. Oh, uh, we also use WorldCat, which is interesting. Um, it's a little trickier to use. Um, is it WorldCat.org? Yeah. Um, so let's do sleep tips. Now, again, how this is useful, how this is the most useful, is um, scrolling down in the left nav here and looking under topics, kind of getting a sense of where are the uh, how how are the books categorized? So, 
402 sleep tip books are in the medicine space. Some are in sociology. That's interesting, right? Like why, what on earth is sociologically relevant uh, around sleep? But that, that's, that's the kinds of questions that as a link builder, as a link prospector, as a content strategist, ultimately you need to be asking is, is where and how does my topic connect with other areas of study? Right, linguistics and sleep. What on earth? Uh, probably more the literature side of things. Music. That's interesting. History, engineering, and technology. Okay, that starts to get cool. Psychology. So all of these areas of categorization. So so this is the Dewey decimal. Sorry, this is the Dewey decimal system here. Ultimately, the Dewey decimal system of categorizing uh, content. Um, but all of these areas intersect with sleep and sleep tips. So the reason this is this is critical is is you're going to be forced to sort of think along different lines like how does my topic which I thought was just so narrow how does it intersect with these various bodies of study right and so I would submit to you that you would start if 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 you wanted to you know sleep tips you want to investigate um, different areas to explore you would start with medicine. You know, you start looking at medicine. The most stuff's been written there. So we see sleep disorder uh, source book, sleep aids. That's interesting. Um, we see no cry sleep solution for toddlers and preschoolers. So getting your kids to go to sleep. Um, it, it's um, it's it's hard, honestly, folks. It's, it, we we really struggle with um, consistent processes for content ideation. Uh, or certainly consistent processes for where do we get our keywords for for prospecting, um, which are kind of one and the same, uh, but but it, it it's something that we really you, you kind of have to get into spend 30 minutes or an hour just finding productive keywords or useful directions to look, and I think a lot of folks they 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 want to skip over this part, and it's in a lot of ways the most important part of, of your prospecting that you'll be doing. Um, let's, let me see uh, where we're at here. Oh, so we, we talked about t looking for keywords and directions um, and then testing them with you know, your, your keywords and then the in URL links at HTML. And again, it's, we, 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 we believe in flexibility. We believe in uh, being nimble and being open to um, new directions and new ideas, and and you do that, you stretch your brain out a lot when you use stuff like DMOs and WorldCat. You're gonna you're gonna find you know take your SEO keywords, bring them over there, and see what comes back. Take your your topic, your topics that you wanna wanna write about that you think are relevant to your audience. Throw those in there and see what kinds of what kind of comes back, what kinds of ideas come back for you, uh, and that's where you're gonna you're gonna really start to see how you can what what, what areas to 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 use what what keywords to use as as uh, when you're when you're prospecting for for broken links pages. Um, so now outside of this, there there are some core areas of linkability that we found where there's lots of dead content where there's lots of opportunity to kind of do crossovers. So health and wellness, you know, nutrition, mental health, seniors, veterans, jobs and careers, local is a big one. Again, as they intersect with any of the other topic areas, local seniors, you know, local people with sleep disorders maybe. Um, are there any local factors that impact sleep disorders? Um, disaster preparedness for people with sleep apnea. I don't know, is that, could that be something? Legal rights, do you, do you have, if you're a narcoleptic, do you have any specific legal rights that people should know about? Any kind of underserved communities? Um, immigrants with sleep disorders, uh, how, how can they get help? How should they be looking for help? Or illegal immigrants, uh, perhaps. Um, so again, you know, if, if you're, and if you're creating content for these, for these groups or these areas, you're going to have linkers. There's, there are people out there who, who care about these communities who would say, oh, wow, this is, this is a great document. We didn't have anything about sleep disorders and, and people who are deaf. Uh, this, this is great. We'll absolutely link to this. Um, so, so you can, you, uh, and, and also if you're, if you're looking, if, if you're able to, um, you know, if you happen to find something uh, that that is a a deaf related topic, for example, from a broken link building perspective, uh, you'll be able to um, perhaps tie it in on a fix and replace project. Um, 
so again, you know, if you had a sleep disorder site and you found something that was um, on deafness, uh, it's it's not going to really fit well on your site. So you could this is what this is a case where if you really wanted to pursue a given topic that wasn't super relevant, um, just for the pure link authority that you can earn from it, sort of bolting on link authority, I would suggest you know if your site was sleep help or sleepdisorders.com, you could do sleepdisorders.com slash, um, you know, medical preservation, medical web preservation, uh, could be your folder, sort of, then then you would kind of categorize the content that you're fixing and, and, and have it live there in, in that folder, perhaps. Um, and then, you know, as you build links to these pages, look for opportunities to um, link uh, from those pages to your, some of your important target pages. Um, anyhow, there, there's a lot of different approaches for for um, tying in area these areas of linkability, but certainly if you're able to, and you can in, instead of looking for sleep tips, you're searching for seniors seniors content as opposed to sleep you know sleep disorder content, um, then then you'll be opening yourself up to a, a much broader range of of opportunities, and certainly be able to to cover a lot more ground from a prospecting perspective. Um, let's see. So, so let's kind of go back. I want to go back over this particular portion one more time. So, product. We're talking about finding productive keywords, right? So, again, the 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 number one tool that I would suggest you use is DMOS to kind of break you out of where you think you live, where you think your content lives, um, and kind of help you see some of the the, the broader categories or the broader. Um, areas of, of concern, the broader uh, subject matter uh, areas that that your that, that that you live in, right, or that your that your topics live in. Um, I don't. There's. I haven't found a good way to do that with academia. Maybe uh, you know. Perhaps you could do dog training or dog. You know. Do you could you could possibly do this. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Um, go to Google. Do a site. Colon. Dot edu, and we're going to search for dog training. We're going to see what comes back. Um, science and dog training commands in several languages. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, so there is a lot uh, from a edu perspective on dog training. Canine studies. So perhaps canine studies would be a, a productive keyword um, to kind of dig in to that vertical. But but to get at more of the the academic side of things, um, as opposed to just you know just looking for dog training, um, so I, that that might be a, a useful direction. I wonder about .gov. What comes back? Um, dog training area rules. So they're dog training areas, um, and oh dog tr dog training licenses, um, retriever dog training. So. That's really interesting. I don't know how productive it would be from a prospecting perspective, from a broken link pros prospecting perspective. But just if you're if you're in the dog training space, wow. Okay, well, some places to train hunting or retrieving dogs, you need permits and licenses for that. I never would have imagined that. There could be some if if you created a guide for, um, uh, you know, if you had a dog training site, then you create a a, a national guide to dog training and licensing rules. Uh, or requirements that could be interesting. Again, not 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 directly related to broken link building, and you wouldn't want to create that guide until you found some stuff that was dead. But that 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 particular guide might be a good um, sort of fi uh, fix and suggest approach as well. Um, let's see, we are getting pretty close to done, I think. Um, let's see, two or five. So again, finding broken link building keywords is an art, <laughs> it's not a science. And we look in DMOS, we look in WorldCat, I just threw out a couple different things you could do. Take your, your topic and put it in quotes, or not, I mean you could search without quotes, and, and search, do a site colon.edu search, site colon.gov search, and look for how is this topic represented on EDU sites or on, on government websites? How does this topic intersect with law? How does this topic intersect with academia? Um, 
definitely, definitely test your keywords, your, your potential keywords. My, my use, the proxy, I, the, 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 what I use is in URL links at HTML. If I'm seeing 50 plus results, then I'm, then I'm thinking I'm on a pretty decent, I've got a pretty decent, decent keyword. Um, and so we found some today that at 2,500, 3,800, so that that I know would be a highly productive keyword. Again, we talked about some areas of linkability, some of the, these these kind of verticals where we see uh, links earned and links awarded most frequently. Um, and oh, lastly, so this is this gets very high level or very very kind of advanced level, but in certain cases you're going to find opportunities for, potential opportunities for PR. Now, I've been advised by my PR director not to dig into this too much because we are going to be um, doing a, a bigger um, kind of uh, guide to this, but um, there, the, the, the potentially if, if you're, you know, you're an advanced practitioner, if you found something that's big that you think you could you could tease a story out of then and and that involves you preserving a part of the web right your your organization or your company acting as a web preservationist for a specific document that is vital or critical so that civil war document is a great example um, if you are work if, if it makes sense again this is where the brand really this is a rare this is a rare sort of thing but the brand can line up in a way that makes sense for you to be preserving a civil war document well let's get some of the story about why this document is offline now um, let's get some of the story let's let's email some of the people who are linking to it and ask them you know when they first saw the page what they thought about it um, let's get some stories from these linkers from these people let's tease out the story of this particular web page and and prov provide that to uh, you know a, a journalist who's written about the Civil War in the past um, let's let's look for the story here that we could uh, pitch into Civil War bloggers for example and let's let's position our organization as the 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 hero who is preser helping preserve the web so that's that's the nutshell sort of we'll, we'll be digging a lot more into tactics um, and specifics on that further on but at a very high level, um, you can intersect broken link building with PR. There's there is that opportunity, and um, we'll we'll again be be working um, to to share a bit more on that further on. Um, okay, folks, you may be wondering, well, when do I start building links? How do I actually start the campaign? And again, there's a ton of documents. There's a ton of of uh, articles out there about this. Um, and we'll be, uh, if you write to Megan, she'll send those to you, Megan at citationlabs.com. We'll also be providing, when we when we publish this webinar, we'll be providing a list of our our top resources, that the, the, the pages that we think are great on broken link building, uh, and let you sort of go through on, from a, from a um, uh, campaign perspective, how would you actually do this? So what we, we skipped over stuff like outreach emails, the actual content creation, you know, writing it, vetting it. Um, we, we skipped over a lot of that stuff. But what we really, really, really wanted to, 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 to go over today, folks, the, the, the number one things we wanted to do was um, explain to you or, or help you be able to explain broken link building to your clients from a very high level. And and we, we humbly submit that using metaphors along the lines of, you know, it's not a department store. It's a flea market is, is going to kind of help people understand the um, uncertain uh, the uncertainty uh, around what's a, a topic uncertainty that, that is inherent in broken link building. What is certain is that stuff will be broken, but what's not certain is what will that topic be, right? So you can again, you can look in a certain direction, and we talked a lot about today about how to find directions. We looked at DMOS. We looked at WorldCat. We looked at um, uh, academic, you know, doing a site colon edu search, a site colon gov search to look for these how how these topics are sort of discussed in in various in, in sort of different areas um, in different categorizations for for these topics. Where do they fit in sort of the the, the grander scheme of human knowledge? Um, 
and, 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 and then sort of showed how to pick keywords out of there that might be productive and certainly how to test those keywords. Again, my proxy test is that in URL links that HTML with quotes around your what you think might be a productive prospecting phrase for broken link building. And again, I also say, folks, if you're doing um, the, the, this, this methodology for keyword discovery and sort of you know, content direction works you know whether you're doing broken link building or not whether you, you know so so you can take that one home with you this is a real really useful sort of exercise um, that that I you know it just doesn't get a lot of it, coverage in, in link building. it's just hard to write about <laughs> it's hard to talk about it's it's not it, it, but it's a productive um, method a, a productive sort of uh, exercise for for discovering content directions um, so we talked about if it is broken link building going to really be a good fit for you um, and and it's you know again it's not going to be a great fit if the content has to be hyper branded um, it can and, and if the if the client has a or the the website is a a low tolerance to um, you know sort of topical dis or dissonance between you know different documents on the website so um it, it may not be a great fit if, if your your manager doesn't want to see stuff about psychology if on on a on a dog on, on a sleep website right on a sleep tips website um, though it could fit and you can make a case for it, it it may not you know run run some stuff by people before you you really start prospecting and, and running down the BLB uh, path um, we talked a lot about again about finding productive topics um, and we got a little bit into creating content for broken link building, um, and then certainly uh, some some at a very high level how it could potentially apply to PR. Um, I'd love to know if we have any questions. Um, we can we can take them after the webinar. Also, you can send them an email. But uh, Megan, do we have any any uh, questions from the audience at this time? Uh, not right now. No. Okay. So, folks, thank you for making it all the way through this. Um, Again, we will be providing resources for you that are um, uh, more campaign at the campaign level, like the how-to level. This was very much um, at the strategy level, very much at the um, should I, <laughs> not how do I level. And, and again, we just haven't seen a lot of discussion around this. We see broken link building um, sort of talked about a lot now on the internet and I and I and, and sort of pointed to as a, as a great hope for scalable link building and it certainly can be but you it, it's it's not a one-size-fits-all sort of approach the way uh, guest posting was at one point it, it doesn't have that uh, sort of scalability to it and that uh, topical flexibility it's 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 very topic inflexible um, but again there are some some ways around that potentially but uh, folks um, again you you may be hungering for more how-to we will provide that on our website uh, Megan can send that to you as well and then uh, we'll we'll be touching we, we can certainly touch on how to and further on um, webinars I'd like to have something on scaling this uh, from an agency perspective scaling broken link building um, as, a, as a tactic and um, have some guests on for that and then uh, we as always folks we'd love to hear your questions and we we look forward to seeing you in the newsletter uh, thanks very much Megan we can we can uh, wrap there